네, 노 리미트인 서울 2022 탭톡 행사에 어, 참여하고 계신 여러분 반갑습니다. 저는 극단문에서 극작과 연출을 하고 있는 정진세입니다. 어, 오늘 이 시간에는 그 다답 페스티벌에서 어, 총괄 프로듀서를 맡고 있는 조 스틸그랜드의 이야기를 좀 들어보도록 하겠습니다. Hi, uh, my name is Joe. Uh, and I uh, am here today to talk about uh, a lot of the wonderful work that we do at Dada. Um, this is my talk, uh, what we do at Dada and why, disability arts and digital culture. But who am I? Um, I am the co-executive producer at Dada alongside my colleague uh, Rachel Rogers and a wonderful other staff of all sorts of different producers and marketing people and access support workers and administration assistants that we have at Dada. Um, for Dada, I produce shows, performances, exhibitions um, for some of our artists. I produce experiences and also festivals for Dada. Um, in fact, our, our, our old name Dada Fest comes from the idea that we would stage a festival every every two years, a big international arts festival for disabled, deaf or neurodivergent artists. Uh, my focus when I'm producing for the organization tends to be on projects that exist within the world of theater or projects that kind of um, have a sort of uh, digital arts or an online or a sort of creative technological aspect to them. Um, those are my specialities uh, outside of my work in Dada and before I started working at the organization. And I like to bring all of that when I'm helping out at Dada. Um, outside of Dada, I, am also, I also consult on digital and disability art in a freelance capacity. And I run um, the Nottingham-based theater company uh, called Chronic Insanity. Um, which embodies all of these themes of digital art and disability art and accessibility that I've talked about and will go into in much more detail because those are the same sort of ideas that we like to uh, amplify and exhibit at Dada. But what is Dada? Um, well, Dada is an organization based in Liverpool in the United Kingdom, uh, which uh, supports and uh, spreads uh, disability, deaf, and neurodivergent arts. Uh, anyone can take part or be an audience within our organization. In fact, anyone is very much the right word because although we are based in Liverpool, we have a global reach um, all around the world. We exist to empower uh, artists that might identify as disabled, deaf, or neurodivergent, as well as audiences of any label or identity. And we encourage those artists to try new approaches, to uh, develop their creative practice, and to become more confident artists along the way, uh, to try their hand at things, to develop and to become the artists that they want to be. The organization started in 1984, um, and it has grown year on year since with our first festival happening in 2001. Um, the festival, the big festival, Dada Fest International, happens every two years, but that is not the only thing that we do. Uh, in between then, we have other festivals, other events, things in the summer, um, work in progress performances for some of the artists that we support, uh, uh, a mini festival that we call uh, Dada Fest Scratch. And we work with organizations throughout Liverpool and Merseyside, the Northwest and internationally uh, to present work with all sorts of people from young musicians and children in care in our communities to international artists on a global scale. Um, here is a short video that is going to show some of the participants in some of our projects with Dada and to explain um, in some kind of broader terms, what we do and who we are. Dada Fest, disability and deaf arts. We inspire, develop and celebrate talent 
in disability and deaf arts. Dada Fest produce opportunities for disabled and deaf people to perform and access the arts, including training and a festival programme. Our vision is simple, to inspire, develop and celebrate talent and excellence in disability and deaf arts. Welcome to my show here tonight, Twitch. <laughs> and Dory working with people with Dada because I enjoy being creative and making friends and uh, uh, actually uh, getting out. At Dada Fest, we produce and showcase excellent disability and deaf arts through a multi-art form artistic programme. This programme includes high quality festivals, interventions, events, and a year-round programme of engagement work with disabled and deaf people, their families and wider community. I always love art. It's one of my favourite things. Here I am, here I am, here I am, with my favourite band, here I am. The arts provide a platform that can be used to challenge the prevalent negative perceptions of disabled people, highlight inequalities and promote socially just alternatives. Everything that I can go from the hassle to Nickel Store to Teak Group, Down Dada and Scumble. I hope to inspire them and show them that our disabilities can't stop us being musicians. At the heart of the work we do, the festival programmes we put together act as a focus for talent development, showcasing and promoting disability arts. I made the, the greatest time I had, like it was growing. Tonight uh, it's been um, fabulous, uh, a lot entertaining uh, people saying, yes! Um, we could do this. What we develop, support and present also helps change social attitudes towards disability. You do make good networks, that's the main key for me. And I really enjoy that. I do want to do it as a career as well. I always like the idea of wanting my own business and hopefully I could do that. And See where it takes me. But it's about mm, I'm guessing people more involved as well. I've enjoyed everything. It's made me more confident instead of being nervous. It's really important that we start getting the disabled narrative centre stage. It has to be the narrative by disabled people. We facilitate and support the active participation of deaf and disabled people in every aspect of arts and culture, helping create the future workforce of the sector. We believe Dada Fest changes lives. So um, one of the ways that we try and do all of those socially just things that Dada finds really important, um, particularly since I've joined the organization in the last few years, is through, uh, uh, is through technology and through digital access. Um, it's important for us for a wide variety of reasons, um, mainly because we very much prescribe at Dada by the social model of the disability. Um, the social model of disability, if you're not unfamiliar with it, uh, says that it is not an inherent quality of an individual that disables them, uh, but the way in which society responds or facilitates or fails to facilitate that quality so for example um 
in the UK, if you need a pair of glasses, for example, for um, a slight impairment in your vision, it's very easy to get a set of them. If you need them to read, you can pick them up in a whole number of high street shops. And if you need them to see further, you can go to an opticians, particularly as a child, and often get free eye care and a free pair of glasses, if not a heavily discounted one. Whereas if you needed, um, and that then obviously with that glasses, that helps you fit into society and not be disabled by the way that society works much more easily than say a whole host of other um, features and uh, disabilities that somebody might have. Uh, we believe that it is society that disables us rather than something innate within ourselves. It is architecture, it is politics, it is uh, the expectations of our culture and not an inherent issue or problem that we might have. Um, and that means that we as a society can overcome disabilities together rather than as individuals trying to overcome them within ourselves. A lot of the time, that is exactly what we are focusing on at Dada and we think technology and digital access can help us achieve that aim much more effectively and in many more ways than without using it. We started making our work digitally accessible during the COVID-19 pandemic um, for Dada Fest 2020. Uh, Dada Fest International 2020 was our translations festival. Um, and I came on board and started working with Dada in August of 2020 in order to get our first online festival up and running, fully online as well. I know that Dada had wanted to do more digital and online stuff because of how uh, beneficial it is from an accessibility perspective, but they hadn't quite had the right motivation or the right time or energy or resources. But now the, the pandemic meant that they had to do a fully online festival. They were hitting the ground running and going at it with full uh, motivation and force and creativity and making sure every event was available to anybody who had an internet connection and a device on which to watch or interact with it. Um, and then after uh, that festival, we enjoyed it so much, we managed to not only reach people in our local community in Liverpool and Northwest of England, but all around the world. Um, and we decided that it's something we will keep doing because of the access it allows us to provide for our audiences. See, ordinarily, you could argue that um, being placed geographically away from wherever a live performance was would be uh, disabling to you, particularly if you would struggle to get to that location to watch that performance. But through live streaming, through recording and on-demand sharing, through making work that is native to digital platforms, we can overcome that disability. Um, because of the social model of disability dictates that disability is based on society rather than um, on us medically or innately. So we've made a commitment at Dada to continue doing digital content and pushing that further and innovating within that space as much as we can. We want to make sure that we're taking it the furthest that we can. And that's what we're doing. Um, we are beginning to innovate access, not just uh, accept the options that are there for us, the way in which things have been done normally, the status quo, we are going above and beyond with our use of access. Um, we will provide live streaming or an on-demand recorded version of every in-person event. Um, and if an in-person event has an interactive element with the audience, like um, a talk with a Q&A, a question and answer session afterwards, then we will ensure um, live streaming and a smooth running between the in-person event and any remote or online audience um, to create a proper equivalent and fair parity between the in-person audience and the online audience for that event. We will also create multiple natively online events too, uh, digital theatre, interactive experiences, video games, um, music, exhibitions, virtual reality. These are just a few of the things we've already uh, tinkered with and played with, and we will continue to explore all of those avenues moving forwards uh, from a digital culture perspective. We will also know that a lot of things we want to do don't necessarily exist yet. 
So we will be researching and developing new access technologies and applications. Um, a great example of one of these is our recent project with The Space, um, a digital arts organization in the UK, where we were looking at uh, augmented reality sign language interpretation for a variety of different use cases. Um, and there's a video I'll play in a second that will talk through that research in much more detail. But essentially, we had uh, three phases that we were looking at. Um, we realized that there are some performances or styles of performance or ways of presenting work that where sign language interpretation isn't the norm. It doesn't quite fit in traditionally. And granted, lots of the performances don't have interpretation built into them um, or don't come with enough accompanied sign language interpretations, um, which is a problem, but we wanted to try and make the presentation of a sign language interpretation easier, simpler, more effective, and try to find a way of bringing it into performances or styles of performance that haven't traditionally featured sign language interpretation. So one phase of the project looked at um, immersive theatre, uh, promenade theatre, where the audience walks around the stage or through the production, and trying to overcome the barriers that that movement of the audience creates from an interpretation perspective. Uh, phase two looked at a way of trying to create uh, a full augmented reality performance with interpretation built in creatively from the ground up and to the different ways of presenting that, including within the kind of a coffee table or a tabletop in your own home. And thirdly, we looked at a more sort of traditional uh, projection of a sign language performer in augmented reality on stage next to a live performance and the many ways that we could play around with that sort of thing. Uh, I'm now going to show you a video sort of outlining our research and the different steps that we took in order to reach these various conclusions, as well as showing some examples of the end results. Hello, my name is Joe. I am the digital producer at Dada, and I am here to tell you about the Dada Hologram project, co-commissioned by The Space. We've been looking at use cases for augmented reality holograms over the past few months, and this video will tell you a bit more about what we've done. The first phase of our research and development project looked at developing a mobile app that would allow you to watch an interpretation of a promenade or immersive theatre piece, where the audience has to move around the space in order to take part. We began by sending the script for the excerpt of a show, uh, All the King's Men, by Chronic Insanity, off to be interpreted. Here's the footage we received from the interpreter of them wearing a black shirt standing in front of a green screen interpreting audio we cannot hear. The problem with this footage is that though the green screen is well lit for eliminating video processing uh, software, it won't be well lit enough for our app to eliminate cleanly. So we'll have to do some processing in order to turn that real life green screen into a digital monochromatic green screen. That is a green screen that is all one precise shade of green. And what we can see now is that same interpretation being given with a digital green screen placed behind the interpreter rather than the real life one. Our app can now remove this when it's at, uh, functioning so that uh, the interpreter can exist in the world of the audience. And that's what we see here. Someone is holding a smartphone in portrait mode. The back camera is on and displaying the world on the screen of the smartphone. And the interpreter giving the same interpretation is in the bottom right hand corner of the phone as the person walks around their front room showing the app working perfectly. Here we can see our app making software, a series of gray windows full of text and numbers with a central window showing a large white rectangle with a smaller rectangle in front of it and the icon of a camera showing the position of the virtual camera in our app setup. The large white rectangle uh, is selected and the side of the grey outer window on the right shows that this displays the webcam or the back camera of any device that this app is running on, which allows us to effectively turn the phone or smartphone of an audience member into a lens to view the world through. The smaller white grey rectangle is shown to be playing a video or able to play a video which allows us to play the interpretation in the bottom right hand corner of the screen of the audience's phone and the webcam when working shows a person or the world that the camera is aimed at perfectly with a grey screen in the bottom right hand corner which eventually once it's finished loading reveals the BSL interpreter. 
overlaid on the feed of the webcam in augmented reality, interpreting something that we can't hear. Uh, this is the app functioning, and it works just as well with the back camera of your smartphone too. Phase two of the project involved filming a performance which had BSL built into it, Crash Landing by Rhiannon May, and seeing the various ways this show could be presented to a digital, remote, or at home audience. Here we have a performer wearing a navy jumpsuit and moving in front of a fabric background lit in pink and blue, and here we have the same performer being recorded on a laptop, the background replaced with a grey void. This camera films them in two different ways which we can see um, we can see here. The top camera feed shows the video of the performer, and the bottom camera feed shows a heat map of how far away the performer is from the camera. And here is our app building software, with the paused footage in the centre of the screen with a white background, and some dark grey windows surrounding it full of values and controls. Now this white background can be replaced with any video or image that we want. And if we hit play, we can see the 3D video of the performer playing over whatever background we want. Two performers, both wearing navy jumpsuits, are performing in front of a fabric background lit in pink and blue. And in front of them is a special camera we use to film them, which records regular video and depth information onto our laptop of just the performers and none of their surroundings. The surroundings are replaced with a grey void, and there are some controls on the right-hand side of the screen for editing the quality of the 3D or volumetric video. Now, as you can see, this is a live feed with the performance being captured on the laptop in real time. And now we can see the app building software with a paused video of the performers in a white void in the centre of the screen, and dark grey windows for the values and controls surrounding them. Now this white void can be replaced with any video we want, so let's use a video of the performance space and hide the performers for now. So here is a video of the performance space without anyone sitting in it, but if we click to the right here, then the 3D performers can appear in the performance space as if they were recorded in it all along. And if we click on the top centre play button, we can see the isolated recording of the performers playing on top of the webcam feed in, on a living room table as if a small version of the performance was happening on your tabletop. Phase 3 of the project involved filming a deaf performer performing alongside a theatre show, Tuning In by Adam Fenton, with the aim of projecting the performer into the performance space during a live production as an augmented reality member of the cast. Two performers are performing in a black box studio space. Adam on the left is a white person in blue dungarees. Nadim on the left is an Asian man in a grey hoodie. Both are standing up, Adam is speaking and Nadim is signing. This is a traditional performance. But now we see another shot of the same performers, Nadim now wearing a black t-shirt. Adam is now sitting down and Nadim is being filmed by a special camera that records a 3D video of Nadim's performance onto a laptop, with the background of the theatre space replaced with a grey void. This is the setup for recording a virtual hologram performance by Nadim. So here is the app that we made for phase three of the hologram project for tuning in. We just load it up. And what you get is a black screen, which makes our background when this is projected. Um, you don't see any of the black because you can't really project black as a color, which means that anything that appears on the screen appears as a projection in the world of the performance space. Um, we've coded a few different buttons. So if I press this one here, we have an interpretation begin. So what you can hear is a recording of the performer, which means that whoever is operating can follow along and make sure that the interpretation being projected matches the live performance. You can even slow down and speed up the interpretation using these arrow keys. So if we hit the back arrow, we can hear it slow down. If we hit the right arrow, we can have it speed up. bring it back down to a normal level. There are different buttons we can hit. Obviously we can, um, if the interpreter wants to reinterpret a bit, we can skip to a different part of the interpretation, uh, which works well. We can also uh, 
This gives you different types of interpretation, like if we have two interpreters, or the interpreter twice in one space, playing two different characters in different costumes. Um, or we could just stop the whole thing once it's finished, and then exit out of the app. Now, we can see the 3D or volumetric video recording of Nadine projected onto a grey wall, the previous grey void replaced with a black one, which the projector can't project, making only Nadine present in the projection, as if actually present in the space. And now we can see a laptop connected to a white projector, playing the footage that is being projected into the grey performance space in real time. Uh, the projection is positioned above a radio on a chair, as if the projection is coming out of the top of the radio. And pressing keys on the laptop can make the projection of Nadim vanish and reappear. And now we see a shot of a live performance with Adam in person and Nadim's 3D video projected next to them as a hologram. The two performers are still interacting as if both are in the same space, and a live audience is enjoying the performance as it takes place in a room with grey walls and a wooden floor. So um, that is an example of some of the sort of innovative and new ways that we are trying to push the boundaries when it comes to uh, accessibility and technology and uh, digital access, both within an in-person traditional theatre or exhibition space, as well as for online audiences um, at home or wherever they may be. But it all harks back to our first digital festival, uh, Dada Fest International 2020 Translations. Uh, as I said, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to take the whole festival online, a festival that is often distributed over a number of days, if not weeks, through multiple venues throughout Liverpool, uh, theatres, galleries, uh, music venues, all sorts of places, museums, uh, television studios. We had to find a way of taking all of that work that often fits into multiple buildings and presenting it online in a way that was not just accessible, but user-friendly, um, easy for audiences to navigate and to experience. And we had a tough uh, deal doing it. We had 25 plus performers collaborating on and performing work from all over the world, um, as well as from locally within Liverpool, we had performances and applications to perform from all over the place, Mexico, Indonesia, all sorts of places around the world. And we had the whole festival available on demand for audiences as well, which is, as I said earlier, another key access feature. Um, I think sometimes live performances and live events, though there is that lovely live quality about them, can be inconvenient and can be uh, difficult for people to attend, to make, to uh, organize, to be able to be there on time and in the right mindset. So I think providing work on demand, particularly if you're going to be recording it and live streaming it anyway, or if it's digitally native work, not artificially restricting it, not creating a false sense of scarcity, um, is a really great access feature that I think more of us should be doing in the digital work that we're making and presenting, particularly as part of uh, festivals and larger bodies of work, allowing people to experience the events in whatever order, in whatever way, at whatever time that they would like to. And we were able to do that for this festival. Uh, and we ended the festival with um, our Rushton lecture. It is a our bi-yearly, it's every two years, uh, social justice talk from a prominent disabled creative practitioner. Um, in 2020, uh, it was given by um, the uh, artist Deborah Williams on the language of disability, uh, the way in which we talk and reference disability uh, and how that impacts the way that we think or the policies that our governments make or the way that we behave when um, interacting with uh, disabled, deaf or neurodivergent individuals. And here are some examples of the work that took place in 2020. Um, the big square image on the left of your screen is a promotional image of uh, Deborah, our lecturer for that year. Um, the lecture was live streamed from a performance space, but to a completely remote audience from um, Apple Cart Arts in London. And on the right, we have two images. The top image is of uh, the promotional image for Chair Dancing Fitness Take Two. Um, in the 80s, there was a famous exercise tape um, where people would kind of follow, alone, follow along in their homes and do exercise and dance in a chair. But um, uh, the artist Nicholas Smith took that and made a sort of updated parody version with uh, people with different disabilities and neurodivergences and following along to the exercises that they could do within their home, given um, the extent to their 
mobility that may or may not have been affected by their disability or neurodivergence. And then that was filmed and edited within the same style as the original exercise tape. And at the bottom right hand side, we have um, Shanjay Kunda's uh, Kitsugi Gold, which was another filmed piece looking at um, post traumatic stress disorder. And then Dada Fest Scratch in 2021 uh, was our every other year festival. So every two years, we have a big international festival and a smaller uh, work in progress festival for people to try work out on their journey of trying, developing, and becoming an artist eventually. Um, this year in 2021, it was a focus for our fellows program. Um, the Dada Fellows program supports eight artists over a two year period so that they can grow their practice and explore new ways of making work. Um, we work with a lot of established artists as well as emerging and brand new artists in the Northwest of the UK. And over the two year period, we support them in finding out more about themselves, trying their hands at different creative projects or developing a piece of work that they may have otherwise not have had the production support or the finances in order to develop before. And halfway through this development process, they take part in Dada Fest Scratch, which is a week of performances at the Unity Theatre in Liverpool that allow them to try out their work in progress pieces in front of a live and online audience. Um, they also then get audience feedback and they can use that feedback to further develop their piece, uh, their performance, their experience so that they can make sure that it is impacting and affecting or being received by audiences. Um, in the way that they as an artist intend it to be. And we had other exhibitions on as part of Dada Fest Scratch. It wasn't all performances. We had a photography exhibition on uh, at Future Yard in Birkenhead. And we had um, an installation, which we'll be able to see in a second, at Make in Liverpool, plus a concert from our young persons ensemble um, at the Resonate Music Hub in the city. And we had a mixture of theatre, cabaret, dance, music, digital interactive narratives, short films, photography and installation work. A real good mix, a good variety of different art forms and media in this mini festival that's held every other year, specifically with the aim of allowing artists to develop and become the artists they want to be at the end of that period. And here are some examples of the work. Um, the large square image on the right is of Adam Fenton's show tuning in, which you may have uh, recognized from the sign language interpretation uh, research that we did. In this earlier version of the show, Adam is doing a full performance, but as you can see on the right of the image, we have a, an interpreter um, on a video call above the radio rather than the augmented reality projection that we were then later experimenting with. Um, on the left, we see two images. On the top, we have an image of some of our musicians and assistants during the um, youth ensemble's music performance at the Resonate Music Hub. And on the bottom left, we have um, Letty McHugh's installation, Anchorage, which was on at Make Liverpool as part of Dada Fest Scratch in 2021. Um, it is a fabric canvas tent and the dimensions on the inside of which are the exact same dimensions of the artist's bedroom. Um, uh, a, a room that the artist is very familiar with as occasionally they are left bed bound by their um, multiple uh, disabilities. And so this is an installation that allows them to kind of tour that space and allow people to see into what that space that they spend so much time in looks like and might feel like to have to inhabit for an extended period of time, much like a sort of monk who has exiled themselves to the seaside, to an island, which is what the piece is based on. And this year, we are bringing our international festival back to full force. Uh, Dada Fest International 2022 will be on from October the 26th to December the 3rd. It's our biggest festival yet, definitely the biggest one that I've been involved with. It's spread out over six weeks all throughout Liverpool with multiple different performances and exhibitions and experiences across various venues in the city. Our Dardo Fellows, who presented work at the Scratch Festival last year, will be presenting work from the end of their incubation period, from the end of the Fellows program, as well as a series of digital artworks from people all over the world. Um, this includes our new commission from the British Council, a project that we're calling Pen Pals, which connects artists from Indonesia, Nigeria and the UK to share in each other's practice. Um, 
And of course, um, every two years we have the Rushton Lecture, as I said, and this year's Rushton Lecture will be given by writer, poet and artist um, Kairani Baraka, um, and will be followed with a panel discussion about um, British art and disability and colonialism, um, which is what um, Kairani's talk is going to be focusing on, uh, which I'm really excited for, as I am for all of the work that we're presenting at this festival this year. And here are some examples of the artwork from our pen pals artists, those artists from Nigeria, Indonesia, and the UK, um, including in the top left-hand corner here, uh, Hannah Madness, who is an artist that we have been working for, uh, working with for a number of years, was involved in my first Dada Fest, um, and I, I'm a big fan of her um, colourful, cartoon-like characters and what they mean about um, mental health and how mental health is... Um, is treated and managed uh, in various cultures around the world. So what's the future for Dada? We've talked about what we've done in the past, we've talked about our history and what we've just finished doing, but what are we aiming to do next? Well, we are repeating the Fellows Project for 2023 and 2024 and continuing our other community projects in and around Liverpool. Our youth music project has just been renewed. And we can also say that in between making this presentation and now saying it to you, um, our Children in Need funded Older Hay project has also been extended. Um, Older Hay is a children's hospital in Liverpool, and we help provide creative services and opportunities for the young patients in that hospital. So they have something to do while they are undergoing treatment for whatever it is that they are at the hospital for. Um, it's brilliant that all of these projects, it means that we're not just a big international organisation, but we also really focus on community projects for young people and vulnerable people um, in our local communities and make sure that they have as enriching an experience of the arts as any other professional or emerging artist might. We're also going to continue to innovate new access technologies and applications, um, more of that research and development style stuff. And we're going to preach the benefits of accessibility, not just concerning disability, deafness and neurodivergence, but also accessibility caused by geography, caused by finance, caused by availability in time and caused by technological literacy. It's no point making all of your work digitally available if it's on platforms that people don't understand how to use or can't afford to use or aren't free to use. And we're going to investigate new models for running disability arts organizations um, at their core. How are these arts organizations run and can they be run differently from traditional arts organizations? We are in a research partnership with Coventry University. And that is a research project looking at different ways of running disability arts organizations that we are undergoing over the next 12 months. Um, and we hope to have some very interesting results looking at um, distributed leadership and artistic advisory groups and groups of disabled, deaf and neurodivergent individuals making decisions about the organisations that serve them rather than just individual or pairs of figureheads leading the way, a much more community focused way of running an arts organisation. And that's my talk. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, my name has been Joe. And here, if you want to find out more about what Dada Fest does, are all of our contact information. You can visit our website, um, www.dadafest.co.uk. Or you can find us on any social media you might expect us to find us on um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or on uh, TikTok at, at Dada Fest. Um, thank you for listening. Thanks. <laughs>